Some time ago when we pulled this little motor apart, it was in a very sad and sorry state externally, but internally it was actually rather nice. Very little use it would appear. So I bit the bullet, I sent everything away to get cleaned, and by cleaning I meant vapor blasting and sandblasting. So here is the small part of the case, looking absolutely brand new now. It, that was where the flywheel sits, if you remember all that rusty stuff that was in there. Put a picture right here, compared to this. Massive improvement. Here is the large part of the case, brand spanking new nice and sweet the cylinder head both sides the world's smallest inlet manifold look at that looks like it's a brand new one and for this one i got sandblasted so they mask it all up on inside so it doesn't damage the bore and just clean all the rust externally now if you're interested in getting this done i got it done by a local mob here in sydney and it was about 300 bucks well worth it i think considering how rare the little bike is and the effort that i've already put in what we're about to do before we start reassembling the motor is get it ready for reassembly and by that i mean we might attack it with the die grinder see if we can squeeze out a few more horsepowers or maybe a few extra kilometers an hour out of it as you're all aware the tiny little moto compo was speed limited apparently to 30 kilometers an hour um, so I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more. So we'll get the die grinder out. We'll do a bit of case and port matching with the cylinder and the cases. Uh, we might go at this little guy and see if we can squeeze a little bit more out of this. We'll leave the cylinder head alone and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it pays dividends in the end. So let's get to it. Okay, so I've marked up this part of the big case and that's probably looking pretty similar to what I'm going to take out. It's very hard to show on camera, but when I look down there in the bores, I can see that the cylinder and the case are perfectly port matched. So there's nothing to do there. It's just really taking out some of those edges and making the flow a little bit better. Um, remember, 1% here, 1% there, pretty soon turns into 5, 10% and then he's starting to talk about some serious gains. So it might not seem much, but hey, I've got it apart. I might as well do it and I enjoy doing it as well. So I'll pull this back apart and then I will reassemble the cylinder on the small case and we'll mark it up and see what that leaves us and then we'll attack it with the die grinder. Righto, so I've finished marking up the cases now. Um, bring it a little bit closer. So that's pretty much what I'm looking to take out or smooth out. Might not actually take all that out, I'll just smooth it out and there it is again. Like I said, when I put the cylinder up to the ports, it does match absolutely perfect. So that's a really good sign. That's one less job that I don't have to do.
All right, here we are with the large part of the case fully ported and smoothed out. It's starting to look fantastic. Not sure how well it shows up in the camera there. Now all we have to do is match the small part of the case to the large part of the case and we are pretty much done with the case. Then we can move on to the cylinder. So back out with the die grinder and let's get into this side. Bit of time on the die grinder and the little hand file and this is what we've got so just taking out all those sharp edges smoothing them off allowing the air to flow through from one side to the other much smoother much straighter with little turbulence as possible should generate a little more horsepower well hopefully that's the theory anyway now I just got to smooth it out a little bit more with the other die grinder and the little polishing bits and this side and this part of the case is done. Then we can move on to the cylinder head. Here we are, the small part of the case is now finished too. All polished up looking perfectly good um, I haven't gone too overboard on the polishing it's just probably with I don't know maybe a 240 grit not too sure what the little wheel is um, I can get it a mirror polish but I don't think that's necessary so from here we're going to move on to the cast iron cylinder now I did have this sandblasted as well um, we're going to do a little bit work mainly in the exhaust side of it as you can see that looks like a mighty restriction just there so we're going to open that up so we can at least port match it with the exhaust and then we'll look at maybe smoothing out the the ports on the side as well just a few little steps that you can see here but we'll put it together we'll offer it up and see where we're at okay moving on to the cylinder now that we've got the cylinder bolted up to the case we can start to see where the modifications can happen there now the main areas of concern around the ports so right here there's a nice nasty step there and that's in all of the ports around the cylinder all three of them so we'll smooth them out remove that step which will then remove the turbulence and hopefully that air can transfer into the cylinder a little bit faster that should give more power that's the theory then we'll move on to the exhaust port cylinder it is pretty much done now uh, just open up the exhaust port there nice and wide at the exit and smoothed it out all the way through to the cylinder itself now we've smoothed out the step on each one of those ports around the side which will dramatically increase maybe the way that the air moves through into the cylinder itself so from here I am just going to Put the top of the cylinder on a sharpening zone to make sure it is perfectly flat and we'll do the same with the cylinder head uh, i guess the benefits of that is maybe it will increase the compression just a tad and maybe we'll get a little bit more horsepower out of it as well when i say horsepower i mean like 0 0.2 horsepower or maybe 0 0.1 i don't know so it's going to be minuscule but hopefully it all counts 
Here is the cylinder head. Now this was actually pretty flat, I'm quite surprised. But the cylinder itself um, was not, so it's pretty good now. I'm gonna leave it at that. Now we've got two more steps to go before this motor is ready to go back together. Um, one is to paint this cylinder, get it repainted so it won't rust. And the other is to re-hone it. Um, so what we'll do is we shall re-hone it first. Now to do that, I have bought this little tool here. It is a brake cylinder honing tool. Um, considering most brake cylinders are about the size of this bore, I thought it would be the perfect tool to do the trick. And as you can see, when it opens up, it is definitely big enough. Um, we close it up and we drop it inside. It is going to do the job just sweet. In fact, I would say it will do the job absolutely perfectly. Now, before you re-hone the cylinder, you wanna make sure it is extremely clean. To do that, I've used some prep sole and a paper towel and I've blown it out quite well. Um, some mineral oil is the trick here and I'm using just the mineral oil that I had light around and we're gonna coat the inside of the cylinder nice and sweet really coated up really well more oil the better I reckon I'm gonna really lubricate it And I guess that's it for this episode, guys. Hopefully this work here translates to a better top speed and we crack that 30 kilometer an hour limit that Honda have set on the Moto Compo. And the Moto Compo goodness is just that little bit more gooder. -er. Again, guys, like, subscribe, leave a comment, help that channel grow. It's really, really appreciate your support. See you on the next video.